most of the time when we think about weather challenges, we're thinking oftentimes heat stress, but I think it's important that we don't forget about cold stress because anytime our cows are um, in winter, right, they're trying to maintain their core body temperature and they're doing that by adjusting their metabolic rate. And if they're not able to either eat enough or um, have the proper shelter or the proper insulation, then that's going to be a real challenge for those animals. And they're not going to be as productive as what we had hoped they could be, whether that's growth for our heifers or milk production for our lactating cows. So hello, everyone. This is Luis Ferreiro, one of the hosts of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt podcast. And today uh, we'll be discussing about the importance of optimizing diets and management because of cold weather, right? I know that may not be one of the biggest issues to everyone, but like for us here in Wisconsin, for example, today is a snowy day and definitely something that people have to start considering is cold weather because it is here. Uh, Probably will be here for a couple of months, maybe more. And definitely we have to make sure that the cows are comfortable and that we are providing proper diets to copy with that. And to discuss that with us, we have the opportunity to talk with Dr. Heather Dan, president of the William H. Minor Agricultural Research Institute in Jay-Z, New York. It's also another state that I know there is a lot of snow and a lot of cold weather. So I'm sure Heather will bring a lot of great perspectives about this topic uh, for us to discuss. So Heather, thank you so much for joining us. But before we begin this discussion, can you give us a brief background about yourself? Sure. Thanks very much for inviting me to join you today. As I look out my window, we definitely have snow here. And um, as I went out earlier, right, had to j zip the jacket up a little bit more. It was definitely chilly. That wind was uh, hitting us. So definitely reminds me that uh, winter is here and that we need to think about how we can best care for our animals. And uh, so for me, really, my background, I'm uh, I'm a New York farm kid that grew up asking a lot of questions and kind of that led me on a path of research, uh, specifically working on dairy nutrition and management issues the last 20 years. Now I feel really fortunate that I get to lead our team here at Minor, uh, doing research and education activities in support of the dairy industry. Going back to this specific topic. So when we talk about cold weather and the potential changes uh, that we have to consider, why that's so important to the cows? Yeah, I think most of the time when we think about weather challenges, we're thinking oftentimes heat stress. But I think it's important that we don't forget about cold stress because anytime our cows are um, in winter, right, they're trying to maintain their core body temperature and they're doing that by adjusting their metabolic rate. And if they're not able to either eat enough or um, have the proper shelter or the proper insulation, then that's going to be a real challenge for those animals. And they're not going to be as productive as what we had hoped they could be, whether that's growth for our heifers or milk production for our lactating cows. Given the fact that uh, probably those animals require more energy in order to make sure that they maintain uh, this uh, body temperature. So what can we do from a diet formulation perspective or management that would help the cows to achieve that goal? Yeah, so I think one thing we're fortunate with our lactating cows is that they're eating a lot of feed. And so because of the fermentation process, they're generating a lot of heat to begin with. So they're going to be much less sensitive to cold stress than our, our young stock or our calves. Although, depending on how they're housed or how their winter coat is, that they can be susceptible. So oftentimes from a diet standpoint, we're going to see those animals increase their dry matter intake to make up for that energy needs. Uh, we're also going to, at times, depending on housing, uh, we may adjust the energy supply, and we're going to do that through changes in the fermentable carbohydrates, in particular the sugars and starches, as well as maybe including a, a little additional fat and making sure that fat source is in the right form. Is there anything that we have to be careful about since because the cows who have greater intake, very likely we were removing some of the uh, structural carbohydrates from the diet in exchange for some of the sugar, starch. Is there anything that we have to pay close attention to to make sure that instead of helping the cow, we are not creating any other uh, concerning scenarios? 
Yeah, so I think at least some of the typical changes that I see are fairly small in nature, given right the use of freestall facilities, so we don't have that severe cold stress. But uh, we also want to make sure when we're adding those more fermentable carbohydrates that we're providing enough um, NDF in the physical form of the NDF that we maintain good rumen function and, and minimize any risk of subacute rumen acidosis. I think the other thing that we have to keep in mind is that um, – we're providing diets that the animals aren't going to sort through. And when we're, let's say, have cold weather, oftentimes silage coming out of bunkers or drive over piles that we're going to have issues with that silage freezing, especially if we have extended periods of cold stress. Not, not, not the entire face is going to freeze, but right on the edges. And so those big chunks of frozen silage can really be a problem uh, right at the bunk uh, as the cows are eating. And, and so I think some of the things that we do here um, at Miner would be to deface that silage and that helps break up those big frozen chunks. Frozen silage is definitely a concern. And I always have the impression that when the cows consume some of the frozen silage for the first time uh, in the year, that the cows get a little bit more loose manure and some variation in intake, the initial uh, few days where we see that. Obviously, we measure intake uh, on a cow basis because of studies, right? So we can have this luxury that maybe dairy farmers and nutritionists in the field will not have opportunity to see. Uh, but are there any strategies that you see that can help us copy with that? Yeah, so the frozen silage, right, those are one of those things that I don't think there's too much we can do. We try to have proper face management. I think the one key thing that we do is try to um, uh, have a proper feed out rate, so six inches or more when we can uh, through the winter time, and then using instead of just a bucket loader to remove or desile that we're defacing, and so that motion helps break up some of those large pieces and then, um, right, obviously, if it makes it all the way through the mixer wagon, ends up at the feed bunk, increases the risk of those cows sorting that feed. Uh, so for the most part, unless we have extended periods of time where um, it's really cold, then we don't have too much problems with those uh, frozen pieces. I think the other thing that we, we do is um, try to control the plastic length that's over our face or how far we're cutting that plastic back to minimize any rain or snow um, and any snow melt getting in there and contributing to uh, some of that silage freezing, especially on the bunk edges. It doesn't have to be this hard to keep cows pregnant. At Virtus Nutrition, we understand the negative impact that lost pregnancies have on a dairy's economics. Every failed pregnancy means more money spent on expensive semen, additional replacements to raise, and fewer valuable beef calves to sell. Feed what embryos need. Strata with EPA DHA, the pregnancy nutrient. And I'm sure this will be something that people there are used to pay very close attention during the summer, but not used to see some of those colder winters we enjoy learning about because it's the kind of thing that, like in my case, for example, I never thought about that until I came to Wisconsin and had the opportunity to see some of those issues. But absolutely, I think that uh, a nice rate of removal, making sure you don't get some of those uh, frozen silage over and over is a key aspect of that. So if we shift gears a little bit related to uh, the diet, uh, what are other management uh, related to the dairy that we can implement to help with any issues associated with colder weather? Yeah, so I think a couple of things that are on our mind right now is making sure that uh, our dairy barns were free stalls and um, freestall facility and we have uh, curtains. And so we're making sure our curtains are in good working order. So we want to have good ventilation within the barn, but at the same time, we don't want the wind coming in, blowing, uh, reducing the barn temperature and, and causing um, that wind chill temperature, right? To cause problems either with our water supply or increase the, the, the cold stress that the cows are experiencing. So that's a, a big one for us as well as making sure overhead doors are functioning. Um, going back to a little bit of the diet or uh, management there, uh, we are looking at, um, we use molasses and so we'll change over to a winter formula so we don't have issues with that molasses freezing on us or at least the pump giving us issues in the colder weather. And then um, one other thing that we try to do is if we do have uh, a large snowfall happening, we'll remove or actually 
that snow from the bunk face or the where we're going to be driving and defacing ahead of time. So we're not adding any of that additional snow into um, the bucket of silage that we're picking up, putting into the mixer. So we're trying to control that extra uh, water into uh, the TMR dry matter and not having changes there. So trying to hit our targets as close as possible. And likewise, here we're also removing the whey permeate from the diet, which exactly like molasses cause exactly all the same issues during the winter uh so so everything is changing slowly but changing so something very important uh in many different places for many different uh feed ingredients uh, and we talk a lot about lactating cows uh but how about the other animals uh in a dairy which other issues we can have with colder weather that we have to be prepared for yeah, so I think oftentimes probably our heifers are at more risk than our, our lactating cows in that they're probably in older facilities or maybe facilities that aren't um, as warm as some of our lactating cow barns. They're not eating as much, so they're not generating as much heat. So in those cases, I think most of the time those animals are able to increase their dry matter intake, as well as what we're going to see on whether it's our heifers or our mature cows, we're going to see a change in their hair coat. So that hair coat is really important uh, to, to as the animal goes through the colder fall, winter season, right? The hair length, the thickness is growing. And it's our job to make sure we're providing appropriate uh, bedding for those animals so that they stay dry and, and clean. And, and that's going to help them insulate themselves from the colder weather. I think the other group we can't forget about is the newborn calves or the calves pre-weaning. And, and that's an area where I think most people think cold stress and on the dairy, those are going to be focus areas. And so obviously changes in frequency of feeding, the type of milk replacer or quantity of milk they're being provided is important, as well as, again, not forgetting about their bedding and using things like straw or bedding materials that are going to allow those animals to burrow down and, and stay nice and warm when they're, when they're resting. Absolutely. All great tips. And I'm sure people at home, if they are not already doing that, they will for sure start paying close attention to some of those because definitely very important to, to ensure all the animals are uh, well properly protected and taken care of. So Heather, thank you so much again for joining us today. I'm sure people at home will be uh, very thrilled to learn all those tips and utilize them uh, back home. Uh, for you at home, thank you very much for joining us today and I hope to see you soon. Thanks, stay warm. Hey everyone, we are always searching for the latest and greatest research to share weekly. If you have a dairy nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, Feel free to email the details of your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Thank you and hope to see you soon.